When you entered into this world, you saw people laughing while you cried. Now it's your turn to leave this world laughing while everyone else around you cries. It was Adhan without Salah when you came in, and it's Salah without Adhan as you leave. All of that to indicate that your entire life was as short as the time between Adhan and Salah. And now, Allah is calling you home. As your life comes to an end, just as your prayer comes to an end, as Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu would say when he was looking at the Kaaba, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam fahayyina rabbana bis salam. O oh Allah, you are peace, and from you comes peace. So greet us, O oh our Lord, with peace. Your family bid you a final salam. The Imam and the community, one last salam. And now you hope to be greeted by your Lord with salam. Everyone who received you into this world has now either gone ahead of you or sent you forward. You're in your new home, and the relatives who passed can't wait to see you and ask you about all those who were left behind. The Prophet said that the believing souls are more eager to receive you there than your long lost relatives here on this earth. Perhaps there are grandparents who never met their grandchildren or an ancestor from centuries ago coming to see you and pleased with a good deed that you did to benefit them. There will be people telling grandparents about their children, or perhaps some sharing the welcome news with a parent that passed away that a child or friend of theirs finally found their way back to Islam, maybe even because of a deed that they did or because their death shook them into righteousness. And those who you have now left behind continue to send you gifts in the form of du'as that you taught them and generosity that you nurtured inside of them. You receive the gift with joy and wait for them to come into your world now. When righteousness transcends generations, the righteous before us receive us in this realm at birth and then again when we die. Then perhaps we receive the ones after us in the exact same way. And that's not just through lineage, but through a legacy of righteousness. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ coming to receive you, a special member of his ummah. And maybe you break your fast with him, Abu Bakr and Umar, the same way that Uthman did. Imagine the orphan you helped coming to you with even more love than a child for their parent, because your faith didn't allow you to neglect them on this earth. But was your life worth it? Was coming to this realm really meaningful for you or for anyone else? As your good deeds continue to reach you, you will be pleased with the decree that gave you the opportunity to do that good in the first place. The Prophet ﷺ said that of the rewards of the good deeds that will reach a believer after his death are ilman allamahu wa nasharahu, knowledge which he taught and spread, wa waladan salihan tarakahu, a righteous child whom he leaves behind, wa mushafan warrathahu, a copy of the Quran that is inherited from him. O masjidan banahu, or a masjid that he built. O baytan libn sabiri banahu, or a shelter that he built for the homeless or the wayfarers. O nahran ajrahu, or a canal that he dug. O sadaqatan akhrajaha min malihi fi sihatihi wa hayatihi yalhaquhu min ba'di mawtihi. Or charity that he gave during his lifetime when he was in good health, which now reaches him after his death. As for your impact in the world, you will never truly know until you see all of the witnesses of it on the Day of Judgment. Imagine meeting a Prophet of Allah who had no followers. What was the point of his being sent? Perhaps as a proof against the people or to prepare the grounds for another Prophet after him. The Prophet ﷺ described himself as the last brick of a beautiful home, each brick representing a Prophet before. Because it takes every brick to build humanity and every seed you planted in this world will bear at minimum the reward of the hereafter. So keep planting seeds, 
and trust the one who sets the soil and sends the rain. There will come a time where you realize that it was all worth it. Your life, your story, the one written in the heavens by the Lord of the worlds 50,000 years before this world was even created, now witnessed by his creation millions of years later. You mattered enough to Allah that he created you in this world to be a part of the story. The incredible moments in your life that bear witness to the greatness of Allah, to his aid, to his mercy, to his forgiveness, to his justice, to his wisdom, to his love. Your life was worth living because it was worth Allah creating. It started from a scroll hanging from the throne, and now your soul seeks a chandelier in that very same throne to be closest to its Lord. Your scroll has fallen, but your soul is just coming home. وَتَرَى الْمَلَائِكَةَ حَافِينَ مِنْ حَوْلِ الْعَرْشِ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَقِيلَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And you will see the angels surrounding the throne all together, glorifying their Lord with praises, and the decree between everyone will be judged with truth and justice. And it will be declared, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ the story of humanity started with the Alhamdulillah of Adam, and the grand finale concludes with the Alhamdulillah of all of creation. Alhamdulillah. He made the hereafter an abode to reward his believing servants only because this world cannot contain what he wishes to bestow upon them, and because he deemed their worth far too high to reward them in a world that was always meant to vanish. O oh Allah, you are the one who decrees in truth with purpose, wisdom, and justice. We ask you to fill our decree with mercy, goodness, blessings, and light. O oh Allah, we ask you to guide us to our purpose in this world in a way that you are pleased, so that we can fulfill it with the blessings you have bestowed upon us. O oh Allah, we ask you to bless our families and to keep us connected with love and mercy and to fill our homes with joy and happiness. O oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from broken families, from being abused or being the abuser, and from the trauma of toxic households. O oh Allah, allow us to be patient with the limitations of our bodies, and allow us to be grateful for the health you have bestowed upon us. O oh Allah, beautify our souls and make our concern the beauty of our character. O oh Allah, as you have made us beautiful in appearance, make our inside even more beautiful. O oh Allah, grant us contentment in poverty and gratitude in wealth. O oh Allah, enrich us with pure wealth that we use in your path and to enjoy your blessings without extravagance. O oh Allah, increase our knowledge and faith and grant us firm conviction. O oh Allah, grant us righteous spouses and fill our relationships with love, mercy, and tranquility and make our families the coolness of our eyes. O oh Allah, put us back together when we are broken, heal us when we are sick, and grant us companionship when we are lonely. O oh Allah, grant us an honorable mention in the generations to come, and bless us with a lasting legacy. O oh Allah, cause us to age through Islam and protect us from the trials of old age. O oh Allah, make our gray hairs a light for us in the next life that testify to our Iman. O oh Allah, grant us a good ending and make the last of our words on this earth La ilaha illallah. O oh Allah, ease the suffering of the believers all over the world. Fulfill their needs, repay their debts, shelter the homeless, heal the sick, bring relief to those in distress. Stop their oppressors and end their oppression. Guide those who are lost and give light to those who are in the darkness. O oh Allah, grant us a certainty that empowers us to face adversity with resilience, to overcome our obstacles, to illuminate the darkness with the light of our faith, and to allow us to truly see the light of our decree and realize, why me?
قل لن يصيبنا إلا ما كتب الله لنا هو مولانا وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون